Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Good morning to each and everyone. Welcome to the fourth media forum on accountable child based reporting in the new normal. Our topic for this segment is the child protection impacts of coronavirus pandemic in Bangsamoro, children and their families, and the regional efforts to ensure the protection and well being of Bangsamoro children. Our activity for today is hosted still by the Bangsamoro Information Office formerly known as the Bureau of Public Information, in partnership with the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office in the United Kingdom and the UNICEF. Before we begin, let us hear a prayer from Mufti Abu Huraira Udasan, which will be followed by the Philippine National Anthem. And while we wish to play the Bangsamoro hymn, we are still in the process of resolving technical issues or glitches with Facebook, so we will proceed immediately with the start of the program. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المضروب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا الله أو المايت الله we are here gathered here again raising our hands in a gesture of full submission to your will, beseeching you, Almighty Allah, of your blessing and guidance in our collective drive toward virtual prosperity, success, and well-being of the Bangsamoro people as well as our sacred Bangsamoro motherland. For you are our cherisher and sustainer. Ya Allah, O Almighty Allah, Provide our leaders excellent mental and physical health. Keep their steps firm and strong in getting rid of all evils of graft, corruption, dishonesty, and injustice, as well as public wealth, embezzlement, and squandering for the stability and harmony of the economic life of the Bangsamoro people. Ya Allah, O Almighty Allah, Strengthen their position to surmount all the challenges and stumbling blocks on our way for development in the light of moral governance. For you are the absolute sovereign, exalted in might. O Almighty Allah, enhance the unity, solidarity, and integrity of our people as one Bangsamoro people one Bangsamoro Ummah. Subhanaka ya Allah. Glory be to you, Almighty Allah. Safeguard our motherland against all sorts of calamities and disasters. Hinder the COVID-19 pandemic from us, for you are omnipotent, omniscient. Ya Allah, guide us along the right path. Lay not on us burden beyond our capacity to bear. Condemn us not if we forget or fall into error. Pass over our faults and grant us forgiveness. Let our moral martyrs rest in the eternity of your bliss. Ya Rabbal Alameen, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akhirati hasana tawakina adab al-nar, wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sa mga tatlo, 
again, thank you so much for joining us. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Georgiani Sinsuat from the Bangsamoro Information Office, BARM, and I will serve as your moderator and MC for today's pre-recorded forum live via Bangsamoro Government's Facebook page and cross-posted to our partners in different social media accounts. If you have comments or questions, please drop a message on the chat box. Our moderated chat box is live with the presence of technical officers coming from the Ministry of Social Services and Development, including its very own Minister Attorney Raisa Jajuri, representatives from the Bangsamoro Women Commission, the good-looking men and women of the Bangsamoro Information Office, the UNICEF Philippines, and of course, other friends who are joining us online. So, kahit hindi po kami live ngayon, magre-reply po kami sa inyong mga comments while this is airing. Ganun po tayo ngayon. Kailangan nating maging versatile, mga kaibigan. We are also streaming live this pre-recorded live online event to our um, FB friends. And don't forget to share them with your friends. And together, let us witness today's activity. Today is the last leg of our four-part webinar series entitled Online Kapihan. That's why we have a mug here, Accountable Child-Based Reporting in the New Normal. Each part of the series features an in-depth discussion on different children's issues including health, nutrition, education, and child protection in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today's segment focuses on child protection and their well-being. We will hear about the situation of the children in the BARMM, how the pandemic affected their lives and their families, and what are the plans of our region to safeguard their rights. So, this is the fourth already, no? The fourth series. So, napansin nyo, iba't iba yung ating background. And this time po, pre-recorded na siya because we wanted to make sure na dire-diretso po yung conversation for this morning and everyone has a chance to answer their respective questions on the chat box. So, nakamonitor po, including our very own Minister Jajuri, while the entire show is going on. Kaya mag-comment na po kayo below, and as much as possible, susubukan namin tagutin ang inyong mga tanong, maliban na lamang kung bakit naghiwalay si Julia at si Joshua. We invited head experts from the Ministry of Social Services and Development and the Bangsamoro Women Commission, and of course, our staunch partner, UNICEF, for this event. Today, we will be joined by the MSSD Minister herself, Minister Raisa Jajuri, and of course, the BWC Chairperson, MP Haja Bainon Karon, and the Deputy Head of Mission, Mr. Alistair Toti of the British Embassy in Manila. Minister Jajuri will give us updates on MSSD's effort, while MP Karon will give us updates on theirs in the BWC, and of course, Mr. Toti will give us his closing message. Bangsamoro Information Office Executive Director Amin Andrew Alonto will affirm the commitment of actions to our dear media partners on accountable reportage in the Bangsamoro and give us the certificates of appreciation and recognition to media friends who will attend the four-part series of the Media Forum. So remember, we started this in December uh, just last year and then nagpatuloy po in the upcoming months until we reach today's forum. So sa mga nakakompleto po, Thank you for joining us in the entire four-part series and asahan niyo po ang aming certificates of appreciation as we conclude today's program. In today's forum, we are joined also by our colleagues from the media sector, information officers from various ministries and provincial offices of Maguindanao, Lanao del Sur, Basilan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. Our different stakeholders from MSSD and BWC are also joining us again via FB live chat. Kaya masasagot po yung mga tanong while this entire conversation is ongoing. We also have parents who are viewing our uh, streaming for this morning and are interested to hear the updates from our dear experts. Of course, we have our colleagues from UNICEF led by Mr. Andrew Morris and our partner from the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office of the United Kingdom led by Mr. Alistair Toti. In behalf of the Bangsamoro Information Office, and our director, Amin Andrew Alonto, welcome to this online Kapihan. At the end of our session today, we are encouraging everyone to write a piece, develop a story or any content, a photo collage, short video, or an editorial on health and nutrition. Not yet sure, but I guess TikTok entries are also allowed. Please share it with us or upload it 
in your page and do not forget to tag us the Bangsamoro government page at Bangsamoro GOVT, the British Embassy in Manila page at UK in the Philippines, and UNICEF at UNICEF Philippines. So we can share your stories. So abangan po namin yan as we conclude the four-part series webinar today. So let's begin. To start our program, let us first hear a short message from the co-host of today's activity and a good friend, of course, to the BIO and the UNICEF along, of course, with our partners from the British Embassy in Manila. Please welcome the Regional Information Officer of MSSD BARM, Ms. Jidai Lukman. Ate Jidai, take it away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And good morning to each and everyone. First and foremost, my courtesy to the following persons and organizations who are here with us in this activity. To start with, um, uh, our uh, direct principal from the Ministry of Social Services and Development, Minister Attorney Raisa Jajuri, and uh, our Deputy Head of Mission from the uh, British Embassy, Mr. Alistair Toti, and uh, the uh, Member of the Parliament and the current Chairperson of the Bangsamoro Women's Commission, Ma'am Hadja Bainon Karon, and our supportive uh, Information Head of the Bangsamoro Information Office, Director Andrew Alonto, and uh, the uh, facilitator of this uh, online activity, Mr. Georgiani Sinsuat from the Bangsamoro Information Office, and of course, the Chief of the UNICEF Mindanao Field Office, Sir Andrew Morris, and uh, our uh, media partners from uh, Philippine Daily Inquirer, uh, Eagle Broadcasting Corporation, uh, Notre Dame Broadcasting Corporation, Radio Mindanao Network, Mindanao Exposé, uh, Brigada News, Bandera, Philippine Star, Philippine News, and uh, the Provincial Information Officers of the different BARM provinces. And of course, to our uh, uh, online viewers who are joining us in this uh, uh, FB Live. Um, good morning once again. Over the years, our partner international non-government organizations, media uh, partners, and civil society organizations had been giving us significant contributions in promoting the best practices, the programs and services that are available in the Ministry of Social Services and Development. And through our partners also, we were able to maximize the reach of our information dissemination, particularly in uh, communicating in the grassroots level. And now, the Ministry of Social Services and Development had joined forces with the Bangsamoro Women's Commission, the Bangsamoro Information Office, and the UNICEF in this, in this very significant online event, which is the fourth BARM-led Capian Media Forum for the Bangsamoro Children's Wellbeing Protection. And I would like to grab this opportunity also to extend my deepest gratitude as the Information Officer of the Ministry of Social Services and Development to the UK government for extending us this uh, continued support, especially in this trying time of pandemic. You had uh, extended us and donated us uh, different communication supplies and equipment which will be used in our routinary work and for our risk communication. Thank you so much. Right, so before I end these welcome remarks, I would like to grab this chance also to greet everyone since it's March. A happy Women's Month to everyone. So, um, welcome to this uh, fourth online media forum. Once again, this is Jidai Lokman from the Ministry of Social Services and Development. Wassalam. Thank you very much, Ms. Jidai. Our media friends who are here with us today as well as our viewers from our live stream are definitely excited to hear from our experts. Now, let us begin the first session of this Kapihan. Let us all welcome Minister Raisa Jajuri of the Ministry of Social Services and Development to tell us about the region's goal to ensure protection and well-being of every child in the Bangsamoro region. Attorney Raisa, please take it away, ma'am. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. 
Magandang umaga po sa uh, inyong lahat, sa mga nakikinig at nanonood po ngayon. And I would just like to give my courtesies to uh, Mr. Alistair Torrey, uh, who is Deputy Head of Mission of the British Embassy. Of course, uh, to Andrew Morris, who is the Chief of the Mindanao Field Office of UNICEF. And then, of course, aking kasama po sa Parliament and uh, part of this forum, ang Chair of the Bank Samoro Women Commission, uh, Hadja Bainon Karon. Um, and then we also have our very own Regional Information Officer in the Ministry of Social Services, Ms. Jidai Lukman. Um, and we'd like also to say good morning to our moderator, Georgiani Sinswat, and uh, the OIC Executive Director of the Bank Samoro Information Office, Mr. Andrew Alonto. Uh, at para po din sa lahat ng mga national and local uh, media uh, persons who are here, uh, who have joined us, and the provincial and municipal information officers of the different uh, local government units in the BARM, uh, salam po at magandang umaga. Um, we're here now to talk about how the Ministry of Social Services and Development and uh, the BARM as a whole prioritize the uh, uh, protection and well-being of children in the Bang Samoro. So we'd like to start at the outset with um, the fact that children in the BARM um, are exposed to a lot of vulnerabilities and uh, particularly with the onset of the pandemic um, they are even more vulnerable now. Uh, we all know that the uh, um, BARM uh, has a very high incidence of poverty at 63%. And um, we also have a weak health system uh, despite the efforts of the Ministry of Health to provide uh, quality health services. Yung primary health care po natin are not always on point and are not always accessible to all the children, particularly the poor uh, households. Uh, and because we have very diverse ethnic um, groups within the Bang Samoro region, and many of them are also in what we call our uh, geographically isolated um, locations, yung approach po natin to reach out to children um, and responding to their needs, particularly during the pandemic, uh, will have to be tailored fit, no? Hindi po uh, pare-pareho ang access nila, and therefore we do have to find ways and means, no? And uh, we um, uh, for accessibility of our programs and services, uh, including poor connectivity. Kung tayo po ay merong mga Zoom, meron tayong mga internet, meron tayong mga social media uh, as platforms for informing the public, uh, not everyone is able to do that because of um, poor connectivity and because uh, you know, poor people may not find that as, a, as their priority. So if we go to uh, the impact of COVID no, um, in children in the BARM, uh, generally, of course, this is a health um, issue, it's a pandemic, and it affects all of us. There are risks, increased risks of death and uh, illnesses and other diseases. And for children, because they are dependent on their parents for the provision of their basic needs, including food, po, when the family is not able to uh, provide for the children, because they cannot go to work, they, their small business uh, has to close down, uh, yung child malnutrition is even more pronounced. No? Uh, and because there is also a problem of mobility uh, for a certain period, no? now we have some relaxing of the uh, limitations on our mobility, but because of the uh, suspension of the vaccination, uh, we, we would see some resurgence of vaccine-preventable diseases among children. No? Uh, sana kung nabakunahan ay hindi magkakaroon ng ganitong mga sakit. And uh, dahil sa pandemya din po, uh, ang pag-aaral ng mga bata uh, has had to be 
uh, put on hold for a while and we now have this module and uh, online classes pero tulad po ng sinabi natin kanina uh, lalo na po sa mga malalayong lugar at uh, may hirap na pamilya this would not always be accessible uh, and the parents also no, are having a difficult time uh, particularly in module based learning because now they act as teachers to the children and not everyone will have that capacity um, and because we are especially during the uh, enhanced na mga quarantines many of the children and mothers have had to stay at home and when there is domestic violence at home uh, they are even more uh, vulnerable to this um, violence and abuse that occur inside their houses. Uh, as to non-health impacts naman po, no? um, I also mentioned this earlier no? uh, in relation to malnutrition of, among children. But because of the limited mobility uh, men and you know, many restrictions, marami po sa atin ay nawala ng trabaho. Uh, yung mga maliliit na kabuhayan ay naapektuhan kung hindi man nagsara ay bumaba po ang ating kita and therefore yung mga mas may hirap po sa ating um, komunidad uh, ay mas lalo pong naghirap at and therefore yung pagkain yung pangangailangan ng mga bata ay uh, mas lalo pong naapektuhan even the mothers no uh, who have had to suffer from uh, maternal malnutrition. Um, and because there is limited uh, mobility, many of us have had to stop going to uh, barangay health centers para po sa yan, mga pagbakuna, sa pagkuha po ng mga basic health services, pag deworming and so forth, mga maternal um, checkups. No? Um, hindi po nangyari during the period na hindi tayo pinayagan dahil nga po sa pandemya. And therefore, may epekto rin po ito sa atin. Now, ano po ang uh, polisiya ng Bangsamoro government regarding children? Kung titingnan po natin ang Bangsamoro Organic Law, uh, specifically po ang Section 14 ng Republic Act 11054, meron pong klarong mandato para sa Bangsamoro government na uh, sinasabi dito. Ang sabi ay, ang Bangsamoro government shall respect, protect, and promote the rights of children, uh, especially orphans of tender age. At uh, sinabi po dito na ang Bangsamoro government should have uh, their own policies and programs na tinitingnan po ang best interest of the children. At kailangan pong ipromote at iprotect ang kanilang mga karapatan uh, karapatan ng mga kabataan, mga adolescents, para kasama na rin po ang kanilang survival and development. So, given that, um, meron din po tayong naipasa na Bangsamoro Administrative Code, which is the Bangsamoro Autonomy Act Number no. 13. At uh, under the Bangsamoro Administrative Code, uh, binigyan po o kinlaro ang mandato ng Ministry of Social Services and Development na magbigay ng uh, balanced and responsive approach to social welfare uh, kung saan po ang rights, needs, and interests of all citizens are uh, considered and are uh, provided with the appropriate uh, programs and services. And these include um, uh, children no? who are considered to be vulnerable, uh, one of the vulnerable sectors. So, naipasa rin po ng parliament, ng ating parliament po, ang Bangsamoro Autonomy Act Number no. 10. At ito naman po ang batas na nag-create no? ng Bangsamoro Youth Commission, which is also included na rin po sa Bangsamoro Administrative Code. And under this law, under the Bangsamoro Autonomy Act Number no. 10, um, sinabi po that the government policy, the Bangsamoro government, is mandated to promote and protect the physical, moral, spiritual, intellectual, and social well-being of the youth. 
Um, at ngayon ay meron na po tayong Youth Commission uh, na bahagi po ng Bangsamoro Government. Uh, in the case of the Ministry of Social Services and Development, as we um, perform no, our mandate, um, particularly during the pandemic, we were able to reach uh, 408,941 poor households para po mabigyan po sila ng mga uh, relief assistance, particularly during that time. Um, they received food and non-food items, including uh, mga wash no, supplies na kailangan po natin dahil ang hygiene, yung hand washing, um, is one of the ways where in which we can fight, with which we can fight uh, the virus. So, nabigyan po natin ang 408,000 um, households. In terms of feeding po, and in response to the child malnutrition, we are implementing a program funded by the DSWD, the national government, and this is the supplementary food feeding program where we cater to children aged 3 to 4 who are enrolled in uh, daycare centers. No? Uh, and last year, we were able to provide uh, dry ration to 81,536 daycare children. Uh, hindi po sila pumapasok sa eskwela, so we provided them with uh, uncooked rice and uh, mung beans or mungo para po kainin na lamang sa bahay. And we have a new program. May bago po tayong programa, this time for children who are um, uh, enrolled in schools. Um, we have Angat Bangsamoro, Kabataan Tungo sa Karunungan uh, program, which we call ABAKA, uh, where we provide uh, financial assistance no, to augment um, the cost of education. Hindi po uh, tuition, but the... the this financial assistance may cover uh, other needs, no? yung baon, pagbili ng uh, papel, or pagpunta sa internet cafe. Uh, and we have um, provided this assistance to around 21,052 students from elementary, high school, and college po. Um, we are also working with uh, the different stakeholders in the early childhood care and development. Uh, part of our work is to monitor ECCD, no? yung Early Child Care and Development uh, Services and Benefits. Uh, ito po yung mga daycare centers uh, and other uh, interventions for children who are in this age bracket. No? Uh, for ECCD, we provide some ECCD materials and outdoor play facilities para po sa mga daycare centers na magamit ng mga learners. Um, we also give technical assistance to ECCD service providers, including mga teachers at saka yung mga LGUs po that run these uh, daycare centers. And recently, we have also distributed some uh, hygiene kits, particularly uh, in response to the pandemic, but also other learning materials for the use of children. Uh, ang isa pa pong bagong programa ng ministry is um, a financial assistance program for orphans. Uh, and we call this KUPKUP, where we provide um, case management to uh, orphans uh, who are in the poor uh, and near poor brackets. Uh, here, we provide 5,000 pesos monthly para po makover ang kanilang mga pangailangan uh, related to education, their food, their health, and uh, our municipal social welfare officers uh, also work with the families to monitor no, the progress of uh, the orphans um, in terms of their development and growth. Okay? And uh, to date, we have provided uh, 3,094 orphans with this assistance. Ito po hindi case managed, but for the case managed orphans, there are around uh, 407. Uh, the target is around uh, 1,000 plus orphans to be case managed. For the persons with disabilities, ang good news po is that the ministry is providing a monthly stipend for qualified uh, persons with disabilities under our Kalinga Samay Kapansanan program. 
Uh, ito rin, tulad po ng kukup, uh, there's a monthly stipend uh, for qualified PWDs and uh, it's at 500 pesos a month. And we're happy to say that uh, this is the first of its kind in the whole country. Uh, while there is a pending bill also um, intending to provide assistance to PWDs in the national level, nauna na po ang BARM at nagbibigay na po tayo ng assistance sa ating mga may kapansanan. Uh, at dahil po sa pandemya at nakita nating uh, economic effect no, on poor families, uh, in the year 2020, last year, we had to reformulate no, yung some of our programs at uh, minodify po so that we can give assistance to micro-entrepreneurs, yung mga maliliit pong negosyo na natamaan po ng pandemya. So we have the Bank Samoro Sagip Kabuhayan where we provide um, capital uh, assistance, assistance, seed capital assistance para po sa mga uh, maliliit na uh, businesses. Um, at to date, meron po tayong 9,757 beneficiaries. Kasama na po dito yung mga uh, young people. No? Uh, binibigyan po natin ang bawat sector at kasama po ang mga kabataan. They are provided with 15,000 pesos which they can use uh, as, as seed capital kung bago po ang kanilang business or para po ipagpatuloy yung kanilang na, na apektuhang uh, kabuhayan. Um, another program na, uh, which we work on together with the national government is on the matter of uh, juvenile justice. So there's a regional juvenile justice uh, welfare committee that is chaired by the Ministry of Social Services and Development in the BARM. Here we look at uh, responding and reintegrating to uh, the uh, youth who may be uh, children in conflict with the law. Yun po ang terminolohiya kapag ang isang kabataan ay uh, nakasuhan at kailangan pong dumaan sa sistema ng uh, justicia sa atin. At uh, under the law, they are not supposed to be uh, included um, in the same uh, detention facilities tulad ng, sa mga adult um, detainees. And we have to and make sure that uh, this is followed and that eventually that they are reintegrated uh, with their families. We monitor cases of children at risk. Ito naman po, wala pang kaso, but they are vulnerable to or are at risk of behaving in a way that can harm themselves and that may put them in that same position as children in conflict with the law. So, monitor po natin yon, no? yung mga uh, children in conflict with the law and children um, at risk. Uh, under this, as I said, we, uh, we chair the Regional Juvenile Justice uh, Welfare Committee, but we're also the chair of the Regional Subcommittee on the Welfare of Children. Uh, both these committees are subcommittees of the Social Development Committee po ng Bangsamoro Economic Development Council. So, part po siya ng mga istruktura na nagsisigurado uh, na ang Bangsamoro government ay uh, nagre-respond sa specific needs po ng mga kabataan. In last year, because of the pandemic, the national government um, implemented a social amelioration program. And part of that is the emergency cash assistance na pinrovide po ng uh, DSWD and in the BARM, it was the Ministry of Social Services that implemented the program. So, using uh, a digital platform para po uh, maging maayos ang ating uh, beneficiary registration, ang ating information management, and reporting of the social amelioration program, the ministry uh, provided assistance um, with this emergency cash to 475,178 poor households. Kasama din po ang mga uh, pamilya na napili po natin na binigyan din po ng same assistance because they have children age 0 to 2 and they are in in the uh, poor no um, category. Um, 
At dahil po sa pandemya, marami pong mga pamilya na uh, nilipat. No? Uh, they've had to be brought back to their home provinces. Um, mga tinatawag po nating mga locally stranded individuals. We are also faced, no? despite the pandemic, meron pa rin pong displacement because of disasters, uh, nation, natural and uh, human-made. And uh, part of the work of the ministry was to provide food and non-food uh, assistance, including financial, uh, to these IDPs, to these locally stranded individuals. Uh, and then, we also have these uh, returning Filipinos from Saba, na marami po sa kanila ay mga bata at uh, mga sanggol. Uh, we also provided them not only with uh, material assistance, but also psychological first aid. Um, and in appropriate cases, um, meron pong mga lumalapit sa atin uh, needing child protection and, gen and uh, assistance in the case of gender-based uh, violence. Um, binibigyan din po natin siya ng uh, iba-ibang uri po ng uh, tulong. Uh, including the uh, work of the ministry to strengthen social welfare structures sa, hindi lang po sa region, where we work with other ministries, but also in the provincial and the municipal levels. Um, tulad po ng mga local councils for the uh, protection of children, and uh, mga uh, councils for tra against trafficking. So for 2021, we will continue all the programs that I've already mentioned. Tuloy po, uh, papalakasin pa rin po natin ang ating assistance on livelihood because we know that part of the uh, strategy, no? and, and hopefully uh, we will be able to recover from all of this also economically. So yung mga programa po for livelihood, and the other programs that I mentioned will continue for 2021. At the same time, we're also looking at a policy level intervention, uh, which means that uh, we are crafting a children's code for the Bank Samoro para po ma-institutionalize yung mga programang nasabi ko at uh, matingnan pa ang iba pang mga pangangailangan ng mga bata at malagyan siya ng kaukulang pondo at struktura uh, kung saan makaka-responde ang Bang Samoro. And as the Ministry uh, of Social Services, we will continue to provide uh, case management for cases of uh, gender-based violence and um, those needing child protection. Um, at yun po, no, yung ating mga uh, social welfare structures um, in the province and in the municipal level, in addition to the regional uh, level no? uh, will be strengthened through interventions po ng ating provincial and municipal uh, officers. So ito po ang aming mga programa in uh, summary and we believe that um, the Ministry of Social Services uh, together with the other ministries will be able to provide um, the strategic interventions to ensure that uh, children's rights are protected in the Bang Samoro and that we uplift the lives of their families para po ma makamtan nila yung kanilang mga karapatan. Um, maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Minister Jajuri. That was an informative piece. We're always one with you in hoping for greater years ahead for the Bang Samoro region, inshallah. If you have questions again on Minister Jajuri's presentation, Please drop them live on our live chat, uh, chat box so Minister Jajuri and the MSSD technical persons can take note of it and try their best to answer you real to answer and give you real time answers. So again, despite being pre-recorded, we still have our staff and our teams from the different offices watching over the comment section below. So we can have a clear and genuine interaction during this conversation. Now let us move on to our next speaker who will share with us the impact of COVID-19 on women and children in the Bangsamoro. Please help me welcome the BWC Chairperson and Member of Parliament, Haja Bainon Karon. Ma'am, please take it away. Our Jubilayi Minasaitanu Rajim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I would like to thank our partners to start with Mr. Aleister Topi, Deputy Head of Mission, British Embassy, Attorney Raisa Jajuri, Minister, Ministry of Social Services and Development, Mr. Andrew uh, Alonto, Director Bank Samoro Information Office, Ms. Jidai Lukman, Regional Information Officer, Ministry of Social Services and Development, Georgiani Sinswat, Moderator of Bank Samoro Information Office, Andrew Morris, Chief of Mindanao Field Office, UNICEF, the National and Local Media, especially BERMA Media Partners, the Provincial Information Officers. I am pleased to share with you the findings from the assessment research conducted by the Bangsamoro Women Commission in partnership with the Asia Foundation on the impact of COVID-19 on women in the BARMM. The research was conducted in June 2020 through one-on-one -on -one interview with randomly selected women from the communities and from the line agencies. And let me now present to you the highlights of the findings. So the very objective of the research is to look into the impact of COVID-19 on women in terms of the following. On health, effect of the virus on women's health, occurrence of gender-based violence in emergencies, and on economic, effect of the national local directive on community quarantine on the economic and social activities. On social, participation of women in the implementation of measures to prevent and combat the spread of the virus and the new normal. And on governance, measures undertaken by duty bearers, LGUs and government agencies to respond to the situation. Gender sensitive responsive program implementation by LGUs and agencies and whether or not women, especially those from the communities are able to access and benefit from the same. And here are our respondents for the research. Community-based women, 15 from each of the provinces of Maguindanao, Lananao del Sur, Basilan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi were either married or widow or solo parent. And frontliners, God COVID-19 focal persons from the LGU, MOH, MSSD, MILG, and PNP, WCPD. And this is our findings. In an, in an interview with the community-based women, in terms of information dissemination on COVID-19, 65% of the respondents said that barangay assemblies were conducted in their respective communities to inform them about the pandemic and the directive of the national government to prevent the spread of the virus. In, impact of COVID-19. In terms of health, 0% of the 75 re respondents experience any symptom of the virus. In terms of economic, 68% of the respondents said that they were forced to stop finding, earning a living because of the lockdown and the community quarantine. 49% said that the community quarantine caused an increase in the prices of basic commodities. And 17% said that there were shortages of rice and basic medicines such as vitamins. And in terms of participation of women, 
60% of the respondents said that women's participation was evident during the pandemic, especially in terms of planning, implementation, and monitoring of implementation of guidelines on the community quarantine and in the relief and recovery efforts. On the new normal, 33% of the community-based respondents and 2% of the frontliners were recontacted. All the rest could not be reached. And during the reconnection, the respondents said that the new normal would impose adjustments on their daily activities. Accordingly, the social distancing might even affect the relationship with their respective spouses, but will establish deeper bond with their children as they have to stay home as part of the preventive measures. In terms of LGU's response, 90% of the respondents said that their respective LGUs implemented the community quarantine and that they have provided assistance to their constituents through food packs distribution, which according to 43 respondents were able to feed their families for about three to seven days. However, some of the respondents said that some of the distributed food packs were not in accordance with what had been announced, instead of receiving 10 kilos of rice, many families received only 2 to 3 kilos of rice. In terms of LGU response, medicines and financial assistance were also provided to the respondents, such as the social amelioration program. However, not all respondents were able to receive the SAP. Accordingly, there were also allegations of corruption during the SAP, SAP uh, distribution involving some barangay officials, such as inclusion of names in the list as beneficiaries in exchange for a SAM when the latter receives the SAP. Gender responsiveness of quarantine controls or check points. 54% of the respondents said that in the quarantine control checkpoints, there was no observance of gender sensitive protocols. There were no separate inspection, scanning lanes for female and male. No deployment of female PNP and EFP officers was also observed to conduct the inspection of women. Some female employees of the BERMM experienced harassment by some police officers deployed in some of the checkpoints in Cotabato City. And from frontliners, respondents were frontliners from Maguindanao, Lanao del Sur, and Sulu. No data yet for Tawi-Tawi in Basilan. In terms of agencies' interventions, deployment to medical team MOS, enforced quarantine PNP, and distribution of relief assistance by MSSD. And in terms of agencies' interventions, raise awareness on COVID-19 and its prevention, functioning emergency centers, or QRT, Tri-Age is established, strengthen coordination between and among agencies, LGUs, and the security sector, and a strict implementation of quarantine resulted to low affectation transmis transmission of virus. In terms of sustaining intervention, of the 35 respondents, 25% said that their agencies do not have the financial capacity to sustain and implement COVID and post-COVID interventions, especially 
the medical aspect and relief assistance. Medical aspect in includes hospital capacity for COVID-19 positive. In terms of gender sensitivity and gender responsiveness of interventions, senior citizens, PWDs, pregnant women were prioritized during food distribution. Community respondents were 30% women and separate lane for women in isolation facilities, needs of women and children considered in quarantine facilities. In terms of conflict sensitivity of interventions, involvement of COVID-19 task force in peace councils, creation of task force for peace during quarantine, lockdown, with the involvement of ulamas and sultans. And implementation of interventions in conflict-affected areas. Grievance team during payout and relief distribution to immediately take up and resolve arising issues. On incidents of sexual and gender-based violence, five reported incidents of vow, physical violence, during quarantine, in three in Maguindanao, one in Nanaudi Sur, and one in Sulu. So these are good practices. Security sector as lead in the enforcement of quarantine lockdown. Horizontal and vertical lines of coordination. Creation of COVID-19 task force prior to the issuance of IATF guidelines for Sulu. And COVID-19 prevention integrated in the police community relations PCR of PNP. Gaps, limitations affecting response and interventions. Lack of funds to procure PPAs and other protective materials. High demand but low supply of PPAs, alcohol, mask, vitamins, and medicines. Backlogs in reporting. Delayed COVID test results. No testing kits, no opportunity for frontliners to distress before and after deployment. Gender lens and gender perspective were not integrated in the IATF guidelines. In fact, there was not even participation of women during the crafting of the guidelines. At the national level, the Philippine Commission on Women was not a member of the national IATF. At the regional level, the BWC was not also part of the planning, especially in the identification and design of interventions. Further, the quarantine exacerbated the situation of the women respondents, both community-based and frontliners. Accordingly, they struggle with multiple burden caused by their circumstances as working mothers who have to balance their time for work and domestic rules, and the quarantine forced them to make difficult adjustments. For the community-based women whose source of livelihood is derived from buying and selling, the quarantine restricted their economic activities with affected their which affected their daily earnings. And for the frontliners, their deployment affected their already limited time for family and home. And being frontliners, they have to be available 24-7 and have to be extra careful as they're most vulnerable to infection. So these are the policy uh, recommendations. Towards ensuring that all current and planned interventions in the context of emergency and gender responsive and cultural sensitive 
and are contributing towards women's empowerment and gender equality, the following are recommended as inputs to policies, resolutions, the Bangsamor government will pass. Ensure collection and analysis of sex as well as age, disability, and ethnicity. This are aggregated data as basis for gender responsive and culture sensitive response as well as designing policies and programs for recovery. Empower women to access and use information and communication technology towards greater access to life-saving information and resources. Recognize women's rules as frontliners during emergencies as important partners in ensuring social cohesion, dissipating hate messages and tensions in communities that are volatile to conflict and violence. Involve women in the development, decision-making, planning process of interventions for crisis, emergencies from planning and design, programming, implementation to monitoring and evaluation. And design early recovery packages to include stimulus packages for women in livelihoods and micro-enterprises, especially to widows and female-headed households affected by conflict during the period of pandemic. Deploy more female police officers in patrols and checkpoints to mitigate if not eliminate sexual harassment in public spaces and domestic violence. Provide food packs and other basic necessities to include hygiene packs for women and girls as well as mental health and psychosocial support services, especially for vulnerable populations like the children, youth and the elderly that are socially isolated because of the pandemic, and provisions of psychosocial interventions for frontliners deployed in emergencies, crisis situation. Increase budgeting for emergencies, including pandemic. Establish referral system to address large coverage, provincial to municipal and deployment of food, development of food security plan. Establish networks, linkages between and among LGUs, agencies, NGAs, and INGOs to map interventions and rationalize responses, and strengthen rule of mothers as nurturers of homes. Shukran, wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Chair and MP Karon, for another informative piece. Now, let us proceed to the question and answer portion. We will read the media questions gathered by our dear friends um, behind the screen right now from our members in the media. If you have additional questions, do drop, drop them again on our live chat box and our dear friends will answer your questions in near real time. We'll answer them one by one. Now, our resource per persons will answer some of these questions um, who, that were given ahead of time. The first question uh, pre-recorded for today comes from Ms. Christine Carzo of Bandera News. Hello, good morning, ma'am. I'm Christine Carzo from Bandera News TV. Ma'am, my first question is, uh, now that uh, we are facing this COVID-19 pandemic, how does the Bangsamoro government address the psychological problem of the Bangsamoro children in some places where the presence of war? And secondly, what is the stand of Bangsamoro government in some early marriages in Bangsamoro region? Does these early marriages affect the future of the children or maybe the future of Bangsamoro region? Mm -hmm. 
I think po, I will not speak for the whole of the BARM and the BARM government, but um, as a part of the ministry that works with children and uh, also in my background po as a civil society organization uh, actor, um, yung early marriage will definitely impact the life of a child because when you get married and you take on the role of a husband, of a young husband or a young wife, uh, many opportunities may no longer be available to you. Uh, so in, in some cases, they've had to stop schooling. I think in most cases, lalo na po kung uh, nabuntis at nagkaroon na ng bata, may anak, and uh, that will be the focus of your, uh, of your life. And that may mean, as I said, uh, stop going to school and therefore not being educated in the way na you might have intended. So, ang sa amin po ay uh, if we can uh, prevent this from happening and allow children to go to school, uh, that is the ideal situation. And marriage can come at a time when they are ready physically, financially, uh, emotionally, and intellectually, no? uh, and spiritually. Uh, kung handa na po ay mas magagampanan po nila ang kanilang uh, role bilang asawa, bilang ina or ama. Uh, at that point in time. Thank you so much for the meaningful exchange. Um, we will now proceed with the next question from our dear media friends. The first one comes from Mr. Nigel Sumanghid of NDBC. Mr. Nigel, you may now ask your question. Hello, I am Magandang Umaga po. Ako si Nigel Sumanghid from DXMS Radio Bida, Katabato City. Uh, as we all know po, children are the most vulnerable in the society, lalong-lalo na sa physical, social, and development of the children. Ano po yung mga uh, sustainable interventions na nagawa na at gagawin pa lang ng inyong good office para ma-address yung mga pangangailangan ng mga kabataang na biktima ng uh, bakwit o gyera dito po sa barn? Uh, dahil po kadalasan, ako po ay uh, minsan may tatanungin tayo na mga mga officials at palaging sagot lang ay nagpadala lang kami ng mga ayudang bigas, ganun-ganun and maliban po doon ano, uh, may psychological uh, intervention ba na ginagawa para sa mga mataang ito na apiktado ng gyera o kaguluhan sa barm uh, Yes po, meron po tayong psychosocial interventions na tulad ng sinabi ko kanina uh, we try to do that during the displacement itself, uh, kung meron pong espasyo dun sa kanilang uh, evacuation centers or dun sa evacuation sites. But at the same time, we're looking at uh, the role of the social worker po natin sa mga municipal level to manage, uh, to case manage no? uh, families and uh, the children specifically who are uh, vulnerable, particularly uh, during war and during the pandemic. So tulad po nang na-present namin po sa inyo, uh, kunyari yung mga orphans, hindi lang po sila bibigyan ng uh, financial assistance, but we, may, we will make sure, no, it's part of the guidelines for MSWOs, our Municipal Social Welfare Officers, to regularly uh, go to the family that uh, is providing care or assistance to the child, the orphan, and see to it that uh, the needs are uh, identified and are responded to using the financial assistance as well as other interventions na kakailanganin pa po. So, hindi lang po ito pagbibigay ng uh, bigas at uh, iba pang food items which are also important, no? Uh, lalo na kung may evacuation centers. But we try to look at the uh, intervention holistically para hindi lang po uh, yung kanilang pangangailangan sa pagkain ang ating natutugunan. Thank you so much for the meaningful exchange. Um, we will now proceed with the next question from Sandra Cerilia of Brigada News FM. 
Hello po, good morning. I am Sandra May Sarilia from 89.3 Brigada News FM, Cotabato City. Amihingi lang po ako ng update. Kamusta yung pagbabalangkas sa Bang Samoro Children's Code? At the same time, uh, may mga listahan pa ba tayo or bilang na mga kabataan na kasalukuyang nasa evacuation center? At the same time, ano po yung mga interventions na ginagawa natin sa kanila during this pandemic? Uh, yes po, ang Children's Code for the BARM ay uh, inaayos pa po, po sa level po ng ministry. Dahil po tayo ay uh, parliamentary form of government, uh, medyo kakaiba po ang ating mga proseso ngayon sa policy making, sa legislation, uh, where the ministries, no, usually uh, considered as part of the executive branch, ay uh, may malaking role po sa policy making, sa legislation. And therefore, we took it upon ourselves as Ministry of Social Services to draft uh, a code, a draft uh, proposed legislation to cover the specific needs and interests of uh, children in the barn. Sa, level, sa panahon pong ito, uh, ito po ay dinidiscuss pa rin internally pa sa ministry, but we will be going around to uh, include other stakeholders so that uh, things that we might have uh, left out or uh, iba po ang take namin uh, can also benefit from uh, the opinion of other uh, stakeholders. And eventually that will be uh, presented to the cabinet and uh, for submission, hopefully, inshallah, to the parliament para po maging uh, batas. Maraming salamat, Ms. Sandra and Minister Jajuri. For the next question, may we have Ms. Odessa Cruz of NET25, ma'am? Good morning. My name is Odessa Cruz of Net25 Eagle Broadcasting Corporation. So my question is addressed to Minister Raisa the Jury. Ma'am, um, in during this pandemic period, you have given financial and food assistance to various families in the BARMM. Uh, may we know how has this or how have this financial assistance and food assistance helped them? especially the poorest families in the region. And second question is, are these assistance ongoing until the present? Okay. Sa salamat po. Marami po tayong programa no, that involve the uh, hunting out of cash and they serve different purposes. And uh, it coincided or sometimes are uh, based on the needs ng uh, mga tao dahil sa pandemia. So, halimbawa po, yung uh, Bang Samoro Sagit Kabuhayan is really for uh, micro-entrepreneurs to build their own small businesses or uh, revive no, uh, their failing businesses because of the pandemic. At uh, nakita po naman natin na uh, nakatulong yung 15,000 pesos para po magdagdag no, sa kanilang uh, kapital at para eventually, inshallah, ma mapalago at mabuhay po itong uh, source of livelihood nila. But the other assistance ay uh, iba naman din po ang purposes. No? Uh, tulad ng kup, kup it's really for the benefit of the child para po siya ay may pagkain, may uh, pa pangkalusugan na panggastos, uh, pang-eskwela, and so forth. And uh, we are monitoring this, um, uh, particularly the orphans po, and the uh, mga PWDs that uh, are receiving monthly uh, assistance from us. Yung Sagip Kabuhayan and uh, uh, Abaka, uh, we are also instructing, giving instruction to our uh, social welfare officers to check no, uh, how the financial assistance uh, was used by the beneficiary. Pero naging klaro po yun sa from the very beginning kung ano ang purpose of this uh, cash assistance. Thank you so much, Ms. Odessa Cruz of Net25 and Minister Jajuri for the wonderful exchange. Uh, right now, we will be moving forward for another question. Now address both to our Minister Jajuri and Chair MP Karon. Uh, the question goes like this. What ethical considerations should be taken when collecting information on protection issues against women and children? 
uh, when we provide assistance to uh, women and children, particularly those um, where they are exposed to abuse and violence, um, we make sure that there is confidentiality uh, when we collect information uh, from the beneficiary. Dahil po, una, sinasabi po yan ng batas that um, we have to protect them against further exposure, no? Um, dahil usually these cases, uh, pwede po nating sabihin na very sensitive um, and they may become uh, victims of the backlash of reporting no, their cases of abuse. Um, so we make sure of that na hindi po ito na expose uh, while we still respond to their uh, specific needs. Particularly po siguro in the Bangsamoro culture where uh, it's not very easy to, you know, to present your case, particularly if it's against a family member no? uh, and you don't want to raise the uh, possibility of uh, you know, family feud uh, uh, being a consequence no? of the reporting. So, yun po, at um, we, we hope to have a system that will uh, also help the victim or the beneficiary uh, who makes this report to present their case um, directly, na hindi na po paulit-ulit ang panilang pagre-report dahil, uh, dahil sensitive nga po at, and, and usually very emotional ang ating mga uh, beneficiaries po dito. Thank you for that question. The prim a primary consideration when collecting information on protection issues against children and women are security and confidentiality. Children and women, especially when they are victims, survivors of violence and abuse, should be provided with utmost security. And they should not be exposed to further risk and threat. Anything that they share should be kept and remain confidential. Further, when information is taken from or given by children, the latter should be assisted by their guardians. Thank you so much, Minister Jajuri. Uh, another question um, now addressed both to our Minister Jajuri and Chair MP. Karon, uh, the question goes like this. How does the Bangsamoro government use the Convention on the Rights of the Children in the case of the MSSD and the Magna Carta for Women in case of the Bangsamoro Women Commission? Ma'ams, you may now answer the questions. Last year, uh, yung Bangsamoro Transition Authority Parliament, uh, through a resolution filed by this representation, uh, approved the uh, or uh, considered the children's declaration no? na su nagbibigay suporta po at uh, kumikilala sa Convention on the Rights of the Child. So, uh, aside from this resolution, which I think uh, put that uh, information or raised that awareness among members of the Parliament to look at this uh, very important uh, international document. Uh, we are also looking at the same document in our crafting of our uh, children's code because uh, many of the rights or you know, the comprehensive uh, um, view of the rights of children that have to be protected and promoted are in that uh, document. So, kasama po yan sa mga tinitingnan natin as framework when we craft this uh, policy and also when we uh, craft our guidelines no when we implement our programs uh tinitingnan po natin din ang standard set by the convention thank you for that question the magna carta of women is the national translation of the convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women or SIDO. It provides for the human rights of women and their protection from violence and abuse. 
in crafting policies and programs for women, the Magna Carta of Women provides for the basis and framing. It sets the standard in, term of, in terms of addressing women concern and issues. Thank you so much, um, Minister Jajuri and MP Chair Karon. For our next question, it comes from the Chief of Philippine News Agency here in the Central Mindanao, Mr. Noel Punzalan. And these will be answered through our live chat. So our dear friends from the BWC and the MSSD uh, will be responding on the live chat going on here on Facebook. And the question goes uh, like this, or should I say series of questions goes like or go like this. The first one is how is child labor challenges in the Bangsamoro? Are there any BRMM interventions or policies to save child laborers? Why do parents permit such to their children instead of sending them to school? Um, so here is the question coming or the questions coming from Mr. Noel Punzalan. Uh, our, I believe our team from the MSSD will be responding to these questions right now. And again, that's our question from Mr. Noel Punzalan. Chief of Philippine News Agency here in Central Mindanao. Thank you so much, Sir Noel. And of course, uh, another question will be aired live right now, but will be answered online. No? Diba? Sobrang hybrid. Right now, we will be welcoming Miss Daisy Mangod from DXMY RMN. Miss Daisy, take it away. Uh, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Ako po si Daisy Mangod ng DXMY 90.9 IFM Radio Mindanao Networks. Kota Bato City. Ang tanong ko po ay, uh, mayroon ba tayong mga data ano, ng mga bata dito sa BARM na daging biktima ng karahasan, in particular yung ating uh, armed conflict? Alam natin na may mga nang nangyari, ano, mayroon mga um, pagsabog kung saan may mga kabataan na nasawi dahil sa armed conflict. Ano po ang ating mga ginagawa upang uh, hindi magkaroon ng uh, pakiramdam ng ating bat mga kabataan, lalo na yung mga uh, musmus, ano, yung mga bata, na sila ay protektado, na sila ay dapat unharmed, ano, lalo na mula sa armed conflict. Thank you so much, Miss Daisy Mangod. And to all our media partners who are still participative in this four-part webinar series, I know that there are a lot of important things to do right now, but of course, none can be more important than the next generation for all of us. So maraming salamat po, uh, especially special shout out po to our media relations and current yeah, current chief of operations, Al-Bashir Saiden, yeah, for helping us gather these questions. The people around me are laughing right now. But Kuya Den, thank you so much for helping us gather these questions. And alam ko, kitang-kita ko the other day, paano nyo hinila yung mga media friends para mag-shoot, no? So, maraming salamat, Kuya Den. And of course, to our dear friends coming from other agencies who are beneficial to this success as well, the BWC and MSSD. Ayan. Sobrang ganda po ng exchanges natin for today. And I know that the conversation for our children will continue in spite and despite of everything going on. And to wrap it up, our dear conversation between the media friends and our representatives from the MSSD and the BWC, we will now be reading and welcoming Mr. Charlie Senyase on his question as what is the call to action of the of our call to action for our dear media friends coming from Minister Raisa Jajuri and MP Chair Karon. Mams? So ito po ay um uh, panawagan din for uh, closer coordination and partnership with uh, media um, dahil po kayo naman po talaga ang nakaka-reach out sa ating mga uh, gustong makausap sa usapin po ng mga karapatan ng mga kabataan. Uh, and therefore, we are seeking um, your help no? uh, in the advocacy for children's rights. Uh, ensuring that uh, we look at children not just as uh, you know, subject of our news, but also the voices you know, that bring these advocacies forward. 
uh, and of course during the kapag po sa reporting naman no uh, i mentioned earlier that there are cases that are really sensitive uh, we also hope that media will also respect that that confidentiality uh, kailangan po natin yan that so that these uh, children the women who are vulnerable already will not be exposed to uh, further vulnerabilities through the media. Ang Bangsamoro Women Commission ay nandirito para umalalay sa ating mga kababaihang Bangsamoro. Ang pagpoprotekta sa inyong kapakanan ay aming sinusulong. Ngunit, kailangan namin ang kooperasyon ninyong lahat. Tayo ay magtulong-tulong upang ang BARMM ay maging ehemplo ng isang reyon na nagpapahalaga sa karapatang pangtao ng mga kababaihan at kumikilala sa kanilang kakayahang isulong ang kapayapaan at kaunlaran daan sa pagsulong ng moral governance. Kami po ay lubos na nagpapasanamat sa suporta ng ating mga development partners at lalong-lalo na po sa ating mutihing Chief Minister, Honorable Ahod Balawag Ibrahim Alhaj sa pagbibigay ng halaga sa mga kababaihiyang maging sa loob at labas ng Bangsamoro Region. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And that concludes our open forum slash Q&A hybrid Q&A between our minister and our chairperson for this morning. Diba? I hope we can do more of this in the future because it gives us an interactive way without really the necess necessary um, physical uh, appearance. No? So, nakakapag-usap tayo with the new modes that we have. Again, maraming maraming salamat po. UNICEF Philippines, British Embassy in Manila, and the Bangsamoro Information Office will always be grateful to our dear friends in the media na always one call and one text away. Kayo po ang dahilan why we continue working for our constituents. Maraming maraming salamat po. Continue shooting away your questions. Again, may mga friends po tayo, hindi naman po sila mga multo. Pero nakararamdaman po nila ang inyong mga questions. They will be in this Facebook a live video until the end of this conversation. Tanong-tanong lang po at tanda naman kami po kung sumagot. So take it away mga kaibigan. Lagi po andyan ang ating team to gather all your questions at sa mga hindi naman masasagot, sakit. No? <laughs> Pero baka next time, we will make sure that we will get back to you. Hindi po panliligaw yung kailangan lang natin ng sagot. But of course, to the questions, to the benefit of our dear children in the Bangsamoro. Tanong-tanong lang and sasagot po tayo. Thank you, everyone, for again another full, uh, fruitful in exchange. Let us now hear from our very own director of the Bangsamoro Information Office, formerly known as the Bureau of Public Information. As, uh, of course, our office serves as the information hub of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Joining us now via Zoom, please welcome executive. Uh, via Zoom, pero pre recorded. That's the magic of this um, episode for today. Executive Director Andrew Alonto will give us the closing message. Director, the floor is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Allow me to extend my warmest salutations to our dear officials joining us this morning. Minister of Social Services and Development, Attorney Raisa Jajuri. Member of Parliament and Chairperson of the Bangsamoro Women Commission, Haja Bainun Karun. Deputy Head of Mission from the British Embassy in Manila, Mr. Alistair Toddy, UNICEF Chief Mindanao Field Office, Mr. Andrew Morris. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Bangsamoro, good morning. On behalf of the Bangsamoro Information Office, let me thank everyone for joining the fourth episode of our online Kapihan, Accountable Child-Based Reporting in the New Normal. The effects of the pandemic have taken a toll in various communities and sectors all over the world, but none could be more worrisome than the effects that our children had to endure because of the unprecedented virus. As parents, we must take necessary steps to assure that our children are taken care of and are given the proper responses to their respective needs. On the other side of the spectrum, as officials in the Bangsamoro government, we should assure that the steps intended to protect our children 
are not just band-aid solutions, but rather sustainable and institutionalized. I know that this entire experience has been rough, but just like this webinar series, we are left with no choice but to proceed with our respective work under the auspices of the new normal. It can be done. I am forever grateful to our partners who made this series possible. The Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Basic, Higher and Technical Education, and of course, the UK government and UNICEF Philippines. We are equally grateful to our media partners for sticking with us all throughout the series. Our work in information and communications will always be a determining factor in saving lives, especially for our vulnerable homeland. We look forward in working with all of you towards our shared goal of making the lives of the Bangsamoro better, inshallah. Again, thank you very much and wassalam. Thank you very much, Executive Director Alonto. Indeed, as people from the media and information sector, we have a vital role to play in improving the education sector, the health sector, and of course, the status of the Bangsamoro children. We are always accountable in sharing life-saving and critical information, especially during this pandemic. We are the voice that amplifies those of the vulnerable sector, especially the children. We are responsible for calling and reminding our leaders in our communities and the government to invest in children in protecting their rights for a better tomorrow in the Bangsamoro. As what we've heard from Minister Jajuri and MP Caron, we need to focus on the promotion of practices that protect children from violence, abuse, and exploitation, especially in the time of COVID-19. Now, these are some of the conversations that are not really given highlight in most of our, uh, you know, most of the daily conversations that we have. But there are children in trouble right now. The quarantine measures, the, the, the um, COVID-19 experience has not been good for some children. And at the end of the day, we cannot afford yet another good generation. Ensuring our children's protection and well-being is our moral responsibility. So we owe it to our children, kahit wala pa tayong baby, we owe it to our children to not be silent and complacent. Now we will be listening to a closing message for, from a new found friend of the Bangsamoro government and the Bangsamoro people, the Deputy Head of Mission in the British Embassy for or in Manila, Mr. Alistair Toti. Sir? Hello, I'm Magandang Margasa in your home lahat. Good morning, everyone. I'm Alistair Toti, Deputy Head of Mission at the British Embassy in Manila. It's great to know that we have successfully delivered the entire series of this media forum. This important event has allowed us to gather with our media friends across the Bangsamoro region to share open and free discussions on prioritising the well-being and protection of children, women and the most vulnerable in the region. The role of media in safeguarding future generations is a top priority for the UK government, which we will continue to support. We have seen the hard impact of this pandemic on children and families in the Philippines, but we have also witnessed the resilience and true by any hand spirits within each of us. Your steadfast commitment in combating the worst of the crisis has been remarkable. With vaccines now being rolled out, there is at last a ray of hope that should put a smile on all children's faces. Let me also use this moment to warmly applaud the commitment of our honourable BTA members and their staff who have been fully supportive of this endeavour since the very beginning. And of course, huge thanks to the UNICEF team for bringing all of us together in this platform and well done to all of you for your excellent work. And congratulations to one and all. Maraming salamat at mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deputy Head of Mission, Mr. Toti, from the British Embassy in Manila for the friendship you have bestowed to the most vulnerable Filipino people and the love and concern you have given to them all these years, especially us in the infant government of the Bangsamoro. Of course, we know that we still have more uh, partnerships to come and we look forward on one day having you right here at the Bangsamoro Government Center. Maraming salamat po. So thanks everyone for participating in a unique webinar of our um, dear with our dear friends from the MSSD, the BWC. Uh, it's been a unique experience and of course, just like what I said few months ago, we will be giving out certificates for everyone who have completed 
the four-part webinar series entitled Online Kapihan, Accountable Child-Based Reporting in the New Normal. Allow me to read the content of the certificate. Certificate of Completion is awarded, awarded to in recognition of completing the four-part series of media webinar through the online Kapihan, Child-Based Reporting in the New Normal, conducted from November 2020. November 2020 to March 2021. Ganun po katagal ang pinagsamahan natin via Zoom and live stream via the Bangsamoro Government online portals. The online media forum is co-organized and moderated by the Bangsamoro Information Office and in a part a partnership of the Bang Barm Government, UK Government through the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office and of course UNICEF Philippines, signed by Andrew Alonto, director of the BIO and Andrew Morris, the Chief of Mindanao Field Office of UNICEF. We will be sending the original and PDF files via email. Congratulations and thank you for sticking with us all throughout this program. Again, to everyone, congratulations and thank you for sticking with us uh, for the past few months. Again, we encourage as well at the end of our session today, we hope that everyone gets you know, a little few minutes of their time to write a piece, develop a story or any content, a photo collage, short video. Yeah, so I realized, pwede pong TikTok entry. Short video or an editorial on health and nutrition. Of course, please, please, please share it with us para naman po makita namin ang inyong beautiful work or upload that in your page and tag us through our social media accounts the Bangsamoro Government page at Bangsamoro GOVT, the British Embassy in Manila page at UK in the Philippines, and UNICEF at UNICEF Philippines, so we may also share your beautiful work. Again, to our dear friends na nakisama sa amin all through the months, all the past few months, the past few months, please drop your email addresses in the live chat box so we can contact you for updates. And of course, when you upload your photos, we would like to share your learning and experiences for today's activity or even those that we have done previously. Please do tag us with the given social media accounts. So again, we can also share your experiences throughout this online kapihan. Uh, don't forget to use the following hashtags. Hashtag moral governance. Hashtag for every child. Hashtag uplifting Bangsamoro lives. And hashtag we heal as one again thank you for very much for attending and participating i hope that the next time around the vaccines are already out and about and that will be the heart of our next conversation thanks again and have a great day covid is coming to an end so long as we stay as one maraming salamat po wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my name is georgiani sinsuat and i will see you for another season maybe but the conversation keeps on going.